You good to go? Yes. Our opening hymn, professional, processional hymn, we'll sing in the morning, number 37. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service today at St. Stephen's. Um, I'd like to thank our uh, organists and accompanists, Amy Weens and Sharon, and vocalists Erica and Lois, and our altar guild, Donna, and our Sunday school, Casson. Thank you very much. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Well, the, uh, our fault, uh, to confess their faults, restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for the sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty Father, who of thy great love to men didst give thy dearly beloved Son to die for us, grant that through his cross our sins may be put away and remembered no more against us, and that cleansed by his blood and mindful of his suffering, we may take up our cross daily and follow him in newness of life until we come to his everlasting kingdom through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We'll now say the Venite. <laughs> Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands These are, are all the corners of the earth, of the earth and, and the strength, strength of the hills is his also. also. The, the sea is, is his and he made it, and his, his hands prepared the dry land. land. Oh, oh come, come, let us worship and fall down, down and, and kneel before, before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God, God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When our fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation and said, it's a people that do err in their hearts for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first reading. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will, will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon me slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. 
says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be God. Psalm 130, yeah. number five, 542. Out of the depths I turn to you on high, Lord, hear my call. Bend down your ear and listen to my cry, forgive me all. If you should mark the sins you then could sell, your grace Please be seated for the second lesson. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed. It cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you, and anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who passed raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn, number 171.
Please be seated. No, sorry. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he who you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, and they, but they thought he was referring to merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in a place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and quickly go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary came with Jesus and saw him. She knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then just see, Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in the spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could he not, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind? Man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus the grain, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was laying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. 
Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out. His hands and feet were bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, had seen what Jesus did and believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. The Benedictus said together, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant. <clears throat> the oath which he swore by our forefather Abraham that he would grant us and we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest and thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to bear his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. There's a tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them and sit in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Children, come to the front if they... How are you boys and girls today? Good. Come on up. So the first question I have for you today, has there ever been a time that something happened in your life that made you really want to, that you could cry uncontrollably? Say, maybe a pet died or something fell and broke that you can't replace? Has everything like that happened to you? Or maybe you lost a family member and they died. Is that possible? No one of you have died? Well, that may happen to you folks, you, you children at some point in time, that someone will die or something will happen that you won't be able to stop crying. And that's okay. In the story today in John, we learn that Jesus had lost a very, very dear close friend of his, Lazarus. And, and his sisters were very close friends of his. And he got there, and Jesus did not say, don't worry, everybody can stop crying now. I'm here, I'm going to fix this. That's not what he did. He saw that everyone was crying. And if you notice, when you see someone crying that you love, you will get there with them, and you'll find out that you want to cry too. And that's okay. Jesus gave us permission to grieve. The shortest verse in the Bible is the one in John. It says, Jesus wept. Jesus cried. And it's okay. So when you're feeling really bad, it's okay to cry. And let your emotions, it's a healing process. Do you want to pray? 
<laughs> Dear Lord, help us to heal a broken heart. Help us to turn to you when we have a broken heart. Help us to cry. Help us to heal our wounds. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. <clears throat> now, O oh Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for yourself. Lord Jesus, amen. This week I was planning on doing this service for the very full week. And um, I was looking through Sermon Reader and came across... Uh, a sermon written by a man by the name of Dr. Philip McCarty, McLarty. He's a, a minister in Texas. And after I read it, I felt I'd like to share it with you, his words. And I will, I will do my best to, to give his passion. The raising of Lazarus is the last of Jesus's miracles. It's also the clearest sign of who he was, the Son of God, the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. It sets the stage for Jesus's own death and resurrection. According to John, those who witnessed the miracle went back and told the temple leaders what had happened. John writes, the chief priests, therefore, and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What are we doing? For this does, man does many signs. If we leave him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nations. So from this day forward, they took counsel that they might put him to death. What I hope you'll get out of this sermon this morning is a promise. If Jesus can raise Lazarus from the dead, he can bring you to new life, if you're willing. The story begins. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, of the village of Mary and her sister Martha. John assumed you know the relationship. Mary and Martha and Lazarus were among Jesus' closest friends. He stayed in their home when he came to Jerusalem. It was his spiritual hangout. He enjoyed their hospitality, cherished their friendship. While he had many followers, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were three of his most favorite. This gives us a glimpse into the human nature of Jesus. That is, to feel a certain attraction to some and not others. We all know what that's like. Call it chemistry, if you like, or good vibes. Something about another person awakens your spirit, and you feel drawn to them in a special way. Why should Jesus be any different? John goes on to tell us that Lazarus was ill. That's an understatement. He was at the point of death. Mary and Martha sent for him to come at once. Jesus was laying low when he got the message. He'd had a run-in with the Pharisees. They threatened to stone him or have him arrested. Nevertheless, he got the message. He who you have great affection is sick. Can you hear the urgency, the plea for help, given that you think Jesus would have dropped everything and rushed back to Bethany? But no, John goes on to say, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days in the place where he was. This is our first clue. Who is Jesus? He's the Lord of life. 
He's not bound by time and space. Disease and death pose no threat to him. This comes out of what he told his disciples. He said, This sickness is not death, but for the glory of God, that God's Son may be glorified by it. If you're paying attention, that should raise a question. But didn't Lazarus die? The answer is, yes, he did. And that leads to a bigger question. What does it mean to live? What does it mean to die? To live means to be at one with God and the whole of God's creation. To die is to be separated from God and at odds with the world around you. We put too much emphasis on this mortal life and we simply try to stay alive. We're all going to die someday. The question is whether we'll live in the fullness of God's grace and love. Jesus said in Matthew, but first seek God's kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Put the Lord first and he'll give you all the strength and the vitality you need to experience a life in abundance, however long you live. Jesus stayed where he was two more days. Then he told his disciples, let's go into Judea again. The disciples tried to stop him. They said, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you are going there again? In a sense, they were right. It would be suicide for Jesus to go back to Jerusalem. But again, Jesus was on a different plane. All that mattered was for him to complete his mission. He said, aren't there 12 hours of daylight? If a man walks in the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if a man walks in the night, he stumbles because the light isn't in him. It's easy to get caught up in what others would have you think, say, and do. To be faithful is to seek God's will for your life and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and let the chips fall where they may. Jesus would go back to Jerusalem. If it cost him his life, so be it, he told his disciples. Lazarus is dead, and I'm glad for your sake that I was not there, so that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go to him. Just as a blind man's blindness gave Jesus an opportunity to demonstrate the power of God, to give sight to the blind, so Lazarus' death will give Jesus an opportunity to demonstrate the power of God to raise the dead to new life. God doesn't cause bad things to happen to innocent people, but God can use misfortune to bless us in unexpected ways. If we turn to him, in this way, we have an opportunity to be witness of faith to others. One of my elders in Odessa was diagnosed with cancer and given only a few months to live. Friends and family gathered to console him. I'll never forget what his best friend said. All these years you've shown your boys how a man's faith lives out in his life. Now you have a chance to show them how a man's faith goes about the business of dying. When Jesus got to the home, Martha rushed out to greet him. She said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Hear the anger. If only you got here sooner. What took you so long? Don't be too hard on Martha. When tragedy sti- strikes, when a loved one dies, when he experienced disappointment and loss firsthand, it's only natural to lash out. Jesus told Martha, your brother will rise again. Martha took this to mean that Lazarus would rise again on the resurrection on the last day. This was standard belief among the Jews, but that's not what Jesus meant. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will still live, even if he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Then he asked Martha, point blank. Do you believe this? Martha said, yes, Lord, 
I have come to believe that you are the Christ, God's Son, He who comes into the world. Martha went back in the house and got Mary. Mary came out to greet Jesus. She said the same thing. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. This time, Jesus reacted differently. John says, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews weeping who came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? They took him to the tomb where Jesus where Lazarus was buried, in the shortest verse of the Bible, John says, Jesus wept. Consider the significance of these two words, Jesus wept. Even if you need permission to grieve, here it is. The verb used here literally means to quake. It's the sense of this. sense of it is this, Jesus didn't simply get teary-eyed. He shook with emotion from the depth of his soul. If you've ever wept uncontrollably and in anguish, you know what I mean. Faith in God and pain of separation and loss often go hand in hand. In his book, Don't Take My Grief Away, Doug Manning tells a young couple whose 18-month-old daughter developed croup and was taken to the hospital. She was put under an oxygen tent and given antibiotics. In spite of everything the doctors did, she died less than an hour later. When Doug got there, the mother was crying hysterically. He was a young pastor, and he tried to console her. He said, there, there, you must get a hold of yourself. He said, the young woman looked at him straight in the eye and said with fire in her voice, don't take away my grief away from me. I deserve it, and I'm going to have it. He said he learned from that experience how important grief is to the healing process. He writes, Grieving is is a natural cry. Natural is crying when you're hurt, sleeping when you're tired, eating when you're hungry, or sneezing when your nose itches, itches. It's a natural way of healing a broken heart. When Jesus was confronted with the death of a close friend, he wept. And so must we. John goes on to say that Jesus went to the tomb. When he got there, he asked that the stone be taken away. Martha objected. She said, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see God's glory? They rolled away the stone. Jesus looked to God and prayed. Then he called out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. His body was still wrapped in burial cloths. Jesus said, free him and let him go. It was a miracle and a clear display of God's power. It was also an unmistakable sign that Jesus was the Christ. The question was, how to respond. John says, therefore many of the Jews who came to Mary saw that Jesus, what Jesus did, and believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. For the Pharisees and their henchmen, it was the beginning of the end for this man, Jesus. For those of faith, it was the beginning of new life. The question is, which will it be for you? Will you open your heart and honor Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Will you walk in his footsteps and follow his example? Only you can say who or what will be the Lord of your life. At the onset, I said the raising of Lazarus contains a promise, and it does. If Jesus can raise Lazarus from the dead, He can bring you to new life as well. But it depends on you and your willingness to profess the faith in Jesus Christ. If you've already made a profession of faith and you are willing to reaffirm it, either way, I don't know a better way than to profess faith in Jesus Christ than to offer the prayer of John Wellesley. 
Here's what I suggest. I'll give you the words. Let them speak of your faith and of your commitment to Jesus Christ. Let us pray. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to the pleasure and disposal, to thy pleasure and disposal. Amen. Live each day in the spirit of this prayer. Surrender each day to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In time, you'll experience a dimension of life you could have never imagined. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We'll stand for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who, conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We're singing. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the king. And do thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. O Lord, oh. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit that we may be, we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trust in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, though through the might 
of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, our Heavenly Father, and almighty and everlasting God, who has softly brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn, number 345. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign king, the parliaments of the commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under him, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace to the honor of thy holy name and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we be humbly beseech thee all sorts and conditions of men, that while thou wouldst be pleased to make their way known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit 
that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to our fatherly goodness all those who are in any way afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. We pray for the world. We pray for Russia and Ukraine, for its people and its leadership. We pray they resolve their differences and put love ahead of the greed and selfishness. We pray for the people of Mississippi who have been devastated by a tornado. We pray for the families that they have lost, that have lost loved ones. We pray for those who have lost their homes and their jobs. As Christians, we pray for our indigenous and reconciliation. Our work for justice and reconciliation is grounded in scripture and common worship life. We need to pray constantly for God's healing touch in our lives and in the broken relationships between indigenous and newcomer people. We pray for this, our parish of St. Stephen's and all who have asked for prayers for healing, help, or comfort, especially Marion, Glenn, Peter, Verona, Agatha, Ashton, Lloyd, Ryan, Les, Wyatt, and those only known in your heart and to yourself. We'll join together and say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most and humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but of all the, the inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be untainedly thankful, and we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be honored and glory, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And announcements today, um, April 2nd is Palm Sunday, um, and Michael Bruce will be playing April 6th, Monday, Thursday, Reverend Beverly will be here, April 7th, Good Friday, Lloyd Begley will lead the service, April 9th, Easter Sunday, Pastor Patty will be here. On Palm Sunday, on Wednesday, March 29th, at 1.30 p.m. in the church hall, the altar guild will be making palm crosses for Palm Sunday. We would really appreciate anyone who is able to come and help. So if you feel so inclined to learn or would like to fold palm crosses, 1.30 on, the on Wednesday, March 29th. Lenten service and lunch, all are welcome to St. Olaf's Lutheran Church 
each Thursday in March for Lenten services at 12 noon, followed by lunch. Each week, a different congregation leads the service and provides the lunch. Today is Darren's birthday. Harrison Olgichi will bring a Nigerian meal to share with the church today during coffee hour to celebrate their son's birthday. So we'll maybe get a chance to sing happy birthday to, to Darren. Is there anything that anybody in the congregation would like to say for announcements or something I've missed? It's not in the bulletin. Looks like we're good. Find that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 318. Thank you for letting me go to your house today, for letting me cross the threshold and get closer to you. Give me grace to bring you something, myself. Fill me with your spirit so that I will sing, pray, and listen in a way that benefits someone saved by you. Bless our church. Let it be your instrument of grace for people close and far away. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>